What's going on everybody and welcome back. This is Fran or Frankie from Frankie's Aquatics, also known as Shade09. Just wanted to do another quick video today just to update you on the baby axolotls and how they're doing. So as some of you may be aware, I've had, I keep axolotls and I now breed axolotls. Um, it was always kind of part of the plan anyway. Um, a while ago, I've tried my best at breeding these beautiful creatures. Pretty much gave up because I didn't think they were interested. I thought maybe I had two ma two males or maybe two females. I don't know, but I kind of gave up on the idea of breeding them to be honest. So let them cohabit with one another, and then one morning I woke up to loads of baby spawn. So it was really good axolotl spawn or axolotl egg, whatever you like to call them. And then my journey began. So yeah, it was great. It was fun, and out of it all, I got nearly 200 tiny little babies, which are just absolutely amazing. All of them pretty much are doing well. I've lost very very few. And I'd like to think that's down to my absolute obsession with making sure that they're okay, making sure that they're fed happy, making sure that the waters are good. I'm a little bit obsessed. When I do things, I do things properly. And I'm not suggesting that other people don't, but I get obsessive with things. I kind of get myself in this really crazy loophole of the way I think, where I have to check them every time I get up. I have to check on them. Every time I go to the restroom, I have to go check on them. It's a little bit crazy. I've been like it my whole life with absolutely everything that I decide to do. So today I wanted to do a short video just to show you how I choose to care for the baby axolotls and like I said I'm having a great success rate out of it. Everyone seems to be good, um, everyone seems to be filling up quite nicely and everyone seems to be happy and healthy. Um, disclaimer, this is how I choose to do things. Now I'm not saying that my, rate, my way is the only way, not at all. There's loads of different ways that people choose to care for these little creatures and they have great success rate too. So it's not necessarily my way or the highway, this is just how I choose to do things. So without any further ado, let's go check out the babies. So first things first, I'll introduce you to the parents. This is Mummy, her name is Pixel, she's a leucistic axolotl, which basically means she's really cute and pink. And all the fluffy girls, really cute. I will do a more, more of an in-depth video about axolotls, about the truth of the colours and their different morphs and stuff, but this is known as a leucistic. She's very cute as you can see, and I'll be honest with you, I was absolutely convinced that this, this little guy was a, was a male up until she started laying eggs everywhere. So that's the mummy, really cute, really tame. And if we scroll right away along here, we have the daddy, which is known as Flick. This is Flick, he is um, a wild type, really cute, and he just took a big poop, like we knew the camera was coming up. So here's the babies. Um, I don't really know how many I've got. I think I'm nearing the 200 mark, if I'm honest. Just been fed, hence why there's loads of bits in the water, so don't freak out about the mess. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the middle of switching them from brine shrimp, on, brine shrimp onto other things. So this is what's in there at the moment with them. is a fry feed, which I purchased off Amazon after reading it had a great success rate, in particular with axolotls. I ground it up a little bit finer. It was like little tiny, tiny microscopic pellets, microscopic pellets, sorry. So I thought, well, they're gonna look a little bit big, so I ground them down even more, and they're eating it. They're absolutely eating it, they're loving it. So lots of cute babies, but obviously with a lot of food comes a lot of mess, an axolotl mess. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I tend to the water. So without further ado, let's get on with the water chain. So here's a few things you're going to need in order to take care of your baby axolotl's water. First and foremost, you're going to want fresh water. Kind of a given, but you're going to need a tub with fresh water inside of it. I tend to keep two, and then what I do is I go around beforehand and I use a turkey baster and I take out all the crap that I see, any kind of poop or any kind of leftover food, or anything that doesn't belong in there really. Any losses, of course, you can just suck them right up too. Doesn't sound very, very friendly, but it works, it does the job. You can hear the noise in the background, that's the shrimpery in the background, kind of doing its thing. So yeah, I use a turkey baster. This is ideal for feeding and everything. It comes in handy when you keep any kind of fish, really. Um, in the very beginning, you can even suck the axolotls up and transfer them over into a new tub. Saves a lot of time. But as they get bigger, as mine are now, I tend to use one of these, which is, of course, a fish net. Nice, simple, cheap design. I tend to pour the contents of the tub nice and steady over and into this net, it captures all the babies for me, and then I can transfer them over into the new fresh water. Simple enough process, just be very careful, because they're very delicate, very, very delicate, and they're very easy to squish. I haven't squished any. I have, I have big hands, but I have very delicate touch, so I'm told. 
Anyway, that's the net I use, and that's what I suggest you do in order to transfer your axolotls safely. Again, you can use the turkey baster, but you'll find as they get bigger, they'll tend to, some can even swim out the end if you're not quick enough, and then in the worst case scenario, you might get a few stuck up in the squidgy bit. Which, let's be honest, it's not going to end very good for anyone, is it? No. It's also key to treat the water as well for the babies. You don't have to worry about treating the water so much for the eggs I've found, but with the babies, you're always best just to use a prime of some sort. Just a water conditioner to make sure all the nasties that are going to be otherwise harmful to your fish, to your axolotls or anything, always use some sort of prime. Now, this is the one that I use for all my aquatics. Um, it's a little bit expensive compared to some of them that are out there, but it's one that I know and trust, to be honest. So, yeah, Seachim's Prime. So again, we're just going to go around really carefully with the turkey baster. Just pull out any crap without trying to suck up the babies, of course. Transfer the rubbish over. So you're just basically trying to remove any debris that doesn't really belong in there, or if you've had any losses, which is kind of inevitable to an you'll notice they'll start moving around looking for food and this is what they eat this is not a brand in particular this is just by a hobby arty mix um it's basically just brine shrimp eggs this comes pre-packaged pre-made with salt and uh, the other stuff that it needs i can't remember what it is is it baking soda i think it is this comes ready mixed basically so what i do with this i chuck a spoonful of this in a shrimp hatchery that i've made downstairs which i'll show you in a moment and yeah, basically after a couple of days with an, um, with an air stone in there, you'll start to see little tiny baby shrimp. So yeah, that's what I use. And I'm still using it now, mixing this with other foods. So they're still getting the live food of the shrimp and they're also converting over onto other foods too. Now they're getting a little bit bigger. But this stuff is what I've picked up from Amazon. Uh, very high success rate on hatching. You just gotta keep the temperatures quite right. You gotta keep a light on them. I keep mine in the window for natural light. And then you have to have, we don't have to have, but it does help if you keep an air stone in there as well. Keep the, keep the water circulating. The water, keep the water circulating. So here is my brine shrimp hatchery. Really simple idea. Basically it's two bottles as you can see. Chop one in half, stick one inside of the other. Stick an air stone in with a nice, with a nice um, air pump. And then chuck your powder in. And eventually, after a couple of days, you'll start to see baby brine shrimp. The water will turn like an orange color which means they're either, either hatched or they're very close to hatching. I tend to find a hatch. Then what I do is I, I pull them out of this. So obviously I've only got one set up at the moment. I pull them out of here. I keep them in a jug inside of the fridge to keep them alive a bit longer. Slows the metabolism down a little bit. Makes them last a little bit longer. That's the basic idea of how I get my brine shrimp. So there we have it. That concludes today's video. As I said, this is the way I choose to do things. Um, this is the first time I've ever reared baby axolotls. Absolutely loving it. I've bred uh, several animals in the past, but these are definitely my favourites. 
got this little secret special place in my heart of axolotls and anybody that will own one will agree that they're just like no other so many, there's so much mystery still surrounding them um, a lot of people ask so many questions is it a fish is it a salamander what on earth is it what planet did you find that on because they're just so unique there's nothing quite like them um, they obviously keep their fluffy gills right the way through adulthood and they've got a good lifespan between 10 and I believe 15 years some of them if you're very very lucky but yeah this is how I choose to care for my axolotls you're going to see a lot more of them throughout the whole YouTube series that I'm doing I'm going to focus on mostly aquatics the occasional reptile maybe depending if the demand's there for it but overall it's going to be all about aquatics and on this channel axolotls are going to be a very big part of that so if that's something that you and like you enjoy watching blah 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 then be sure to hit the like button to let me know I'm doing things right. If not, leave me a comment or a nice comment or a bad comment, whichever way you're feeling. Constructive criticism is always welcomed as well. Um, and I'll get back to each and every comment as and when they arrive. And if you haven't already, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. And I'll speak to you all very, very soon. So until next time, speak to you soon.